Hello, and welcome back to a review lecture of Direct Box Essentials. In this second part, I'm going to discuss and the basics, how you interconnect them, how simple connection strategies and how to avoid pitfalls. And uh, lastly, I will finish up with a quick view at the two kind of major top topologies of direct box you'll encounter out in the field, active and passive. Okay, so on the screen here, we're kind of on the basic. It's set up you might encounter all the time. It's very common to plug an electric base into a direct box. And of course, there's a quarter inch unbalanced input going in here. And the musician wants to hear themselves. So you take another guitar cable, a quarter inch output. You take the through jack. Some DIs will be labeled output. In this radial here, it's labeled a through. And this just goes off and goes off to the bass amp. And the bass amp, of course, plugs into the speaker. So in this configuration, um, the input is passed to the output. These are They are directly wired together. It shouldn't affect the tonality of the bass at the amplifier. It's just a direct connection. Of course, over here on the back side of the DI, we can plug in an XLR plug, which can go off to our live sound console or your beautiful API 1608 recording console if you're lucky enough to have one. Now, this is something I've seen a few times on stage, always sorts of, sort of baffles me, but it's usually an inexperienced stagehand, and they don't realize that this DI is actually monaural, right? It's a single channel DI, and they take the left and the right output of a keyboard, and they plug it into the in jack and the through jack, and that is not okay, right? This is not okay because this is not an input here. This is an output, so the left is now driving the right back into the keyboard and you don't wanna do that. So a better solution of course is if you're going to record or amplify a stereo keyboard, you need two DIs and two XLRs going off to the console. Uh, even better solution, if you're lucky, is you have a stereo DI. And here at Nescom, we've got a few of these and these DIs are great because they've got a left input and a right input. And of course, there's a left through and a right through. These can go off to a keyboard amp. You could even use these DIs for two different instruments that are unrelated, like a bass and a guitar. So they don't have to be the same instrument. There are two independent channels and one chassis, and that is pretty useful. You will find out there in the field larger DIs that are eight channels wide or four channels wide. And these are very useful in situations where you might have a lot of keyboards that you have to record or amplify. Here's another picture using our cool DI we have at school, and the keyboard left and right is plugged into the DI. Everything's great. Okay, changing subjects. Two types of DIs you might encounter out in the world are passive and active. Passive is the simpler technology, and with a passive DI, the input is directly connected to the output, right? That's the through. And the audio path off to the XLR, the part of the circuit that does the balancing and the impedance conversion is just a simple passive tra transformer. A passive DI does not have any connection or need for power. It does not need to have phantom power. It does not need to have batteries or a plug to wall power. It is a passive circuit and there's no real complicated electronics in it. In this particular DI, all you see is the transformer and that transformer is gonna do the step down conversion and the balancing and create the differential output between pin two and pin three in the XLR. Um, Passive DIs are great for a couple things. They're really good at solving ground loops. Um, some active DIs may not be as effective as a passive DI. Uh, the other thing about passive DIs is they're cheaper. So you can find the real cheap DIs, the ones you might find out there, uh, you know, on Sweetwater for 30 bucks or something. Those are tend, tend to be passive. So I'm not saying passive DIs are cheaper because are, 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 are lamer or not as good because there are really expensive passive DIs out there that might have classic transformers, might even have transformers pulled from some other device. Really expensive they may. And some of these DIs are known for a particular warm sound. They might impart a gentle harmonic distortion or something like that. So there certainly are expensive passive DIs out there, but there are also a lot more cheaper passive DIs. Um, the one downside about passive DIs is that they may not present a high enough load impedance to super high source impedance instruments. So I talked about in the other video that some instruments like electric guitars, basses, active instruments, Pizzo, Pizzo Electric pickups, those are those present a very, very high source impedance, output impedance from those, those devices. And if you're going through a passive DI, 
the way the source uh, preamp, where the load preamp impedance is reflected through the transformer, it may not be high enough to get the the correct tonality, or it may even create loading down of the source instrument. So in those situations, if you're using a pizza pickup, if you're using a really a high high impedance uh, active DI, active base or something, the better choice might be to switch over and get yourself an active DI. And active DIs, of course, need batteries or a phantom power or some sort of mains power connection. Some p p active DIs get very complicated. They'll have tubes in them and all preamps and EQ and all kinds of other stuff. But a simple uh, active DI, DI like this classic Countryman here really has the same uh, connect, uh, same adjustment, the same controls and connectors as a passive DI. It's just inside it's going to have a more complicated circuit. And the advantage, of course, is they can present a much higher uh, load impedance for the device you're plugging into it, and it's not going to potentially load down some sources. So there's certainly more to say about DIs. Uh, this is a very short, essential review. A lot more information out there on the topic. But this should be enough to get you started and get you plugging in things in the right place. Have a great day. Goodbye.